trough, do you include among those snouts things like schools, universities, nursing homes? I, I'll get the snouts in the trough described a little bit more definitively when I get the budget going. I don't want to, I don't, I'll tell you what it is, I don't want to declare any enemies. They know who they are, the people that are, you know, the people who are going to try to stop what we're going to do. But let me give them a chance to, to go along. Um, but I didn't fall off a turnip truck on my way to the speech this morning. I, I believe that uh, some of the vested interests will fight, and, and um, with the help of the people and the legislature, they'll lose. And uh, if they want to fight, then we'll have a fight. What do you make of the and I'll, and I'll and I will name them. What do you make of the corrections department, for example, warning that if it takes a 10 percent spending cut, uh, it may have to close prisons uh, and uh, double bunk some some inmates and increase tensions. Well, look, I mean, this is all rally around the flag, boys, right? I mean, this is going to be. You know, you're going to have uh, everybody complaining and, you know, screaming, the sky is falling. You know, we have a system in Ohio where I think about less than half of the people in our prisons are in there for a year. So here we have a system in Ohio where we have people who are check kiters and don't pay child support. We're locking them up in the state pen. Do so you think that makes sense? I mean, that's just ridiculous. So why don't we have a rational policy for where we put people? We certainly want the public to be safe. We want, I mean, are you kidding? My wife would make me sleep outside again if, uh, if I didn't keep the public safe. But I don't think it makes any sense to have check kiters and, and people who don't pay child support. Um, she did that when I told her I was running for governor. Remember? <laughs> I was going to ask um, <laughs> So, um, I mean, we need to have a more rational system. But, you know, instead of people whining, why don't they come and give us some ideas? I guess the system is just great over in the Department of Corrections, isn't it? Everything is just perfect, like you asked the other day in the Department of Transportation. The system's just great. Why don't they come and make a suggestion? Because if they don't want to make a suggestion, we'll write it for them. Well, the department has, has endorsed proposals to, to uh, let some inmates out early if they behave well. Well, take so good. Well, then they ought to stop talking to the press. Come talk to us. Related Governor Strickland. Do you have suggestions for self-policing that you mentioned? Well, I, when I went down to to, uh, to the lake, Jim, come on over, would you? I, I told the farmers down there we needed to go find the bad actors. And um, there is a process being done at, at Grand Lake St. Mary right now to do that. There's a handful of farmers that are recalcitrants. And uh, what I don't want to do is have to punish everybody for the sins of a few. So we got to go whack their knuckles first, and that's what Zeringer will do. And unfortunately, if they don't want to clean it up, you know, we, we won't have a lot of choice. But we're going to have a lot of farmers down there doing a lot of talking to the people that don't want to cooperate. I'd rather not put in laws. You know, I, I mean, just to give you a good example, we, you know, you, you, put in, uh, you put in a lot of laws on financial services. Companies start registering their companies in London. I mean, we just don't want unintended consequences from overregulation. But clearly, something needs to be done at that lake. We can't lose that lake. Go Bill, let me go back just one other time, Bill, to, to your question. Look, in this state, we are all one Ohio. And if everybody is going to be, if the coal miners down there in, in Chile were trying to grab the last breath of air, they'd all died, okay? If in our state, all these individual interest groups are going to whine, complain, it's okay to say, here's a problem, here's a danger area, I want to hear that, okay? But don't become hysterical and don't just look out for yourself, or we're going to lose. This state will lose, and I'm not going to put up with it, and neither is the legislature. The Humane Society and Governor Strickland signed a, an agreement to keep an issue off the ballot this year. It doesn't look like all the pieces of that are going to be put in place before the governor leaves office. Do you plan to honor that agreement? Zeringer is, uh, Zeringer is the guy that's going to work all this out. There was really great fear that there would be a distortion of what farmers do. There would be a lot of money poured in here and uh, we would have a very bad result. That's what the farmers were worried about. I know that uh, Terry McClure, Jim Zeringer, I mean, they're worried about this. Um, I think we got behind the curve in terms of what we do on this. But if this agreement can provide some stability and some a sense of where we're headed, then Zeringer will, will work it out. He's already met with the Humane Society leader, and I, I think they had a good meet and greet. And uh, you guys have donuts? 
<laughs> had some donuts and coffee and and so the, he needs to speak to more, talk more commodity groups. Go ahead, Jim. Yeah, well, the, you know, the agreement is something that happened that the legislative body wasn't involved with, John obviously wasn't involved with, but uh, we're meeting with it with the commodity groups to learn more about it. Uh, it really makes us wonder when all the commodity groups sign on to the agreement. And so that's the reason we're going to sit down with them. And I haven't sat down with the commodity groups yet, but to, just to learn more about the agreement. And you're correct, there's not going to be uh, the time going to run out for a lot of things to happen, but I believe they're willing to uh, work it out. And, and as long as we learn more about it and, and, uh, and hear from all parties, that's what we're going to do. You know, and, and let me just say, like, on, on an issue like this, this is a good issue. Uh, Zeringer's really smart on this stuff. That's why I picked him. I mean, he's a farmer. He's in touch with the farm community. The farmers got to decide if, if they like this. I think so far it appears as though they, 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 they may not like it, but they've accepted it. So Jim's empowered to go out there and, you know, he's backed me, backed me off with some of the things that, that I wanted to say. And because, uh, you know, you want to make sure that at the end of the day, farmers are served. Is there anything that you think that goes too far in that? Agreement? I don't know enough Any specifics about it. That you can well, I'll tell you one of my concerns at? is, you know, the impact that it has on people in the poultry industry that would like to come here. You know, do we have more restrictive uh, laws so that we can keep what we have by grandfathering people in and making some changes? But, but my concern is, can you get people out of state to move in state? And I think that's all of our concern. And the question is, is that, you know, is that a trade-off that, that agriculture wants to do? I have to leave that to a large degree up to them. I'm not, you know, I, I have to let them, you know, come back and tell me how they feel about it. Just before you got here, this body voted to encourage you to look at uh, or at least explore the privatization of the turnpike. Is that on the table? Everything's on the table. I mean, a problem with, uh, first of all, you know, you could do a lease of the turnpike. I mean, look, that's an entity up there that has had a life of its own. Um, we, of course, are going are to look at that. I don't know, Jim, if the capital markets are such that a deal like that makes sense now. I will tell you that I got wind of the fact that they wanted to do some sort of a lease of these uh, rest areas, five years. Look, five years isn't going to get the job done. I mean, that's not a good business practice. People aren't going to make an investment and then have their investment run out. I mean, again, this is a lack of good thinking when it comes to business. But, um, no, I think it's something we have to think about. And, uh, you know, I have my people taking a look at it. We look at numbers, but no decision's been made yet. And um, it's probably not the right time. I saw, you know, unemployment up to 10.8%, but there is a lot of money on the sidelines. There's a lot of money out there. Companies just sitting there holding money. So we'll see if, if this makes sense. Uh, you know, Indiana did it, and they've had great success with it. But um, uh, we definitely haven't taken it off the table. This will get me a lot of nice phone calls. Have you looked at uh, executive orders that Governor Strickland um, signed, and which ones you want have to have somebody doing that, but I haven't done it yet. Uh, do, you, do you have any intention of um, renewing or um, reissuing one that would allow the home health care workers and daycare workers to uh, unionize? I, I don't think it kind of allows them. I think it kind of forces them. I don't like that provision. So is that, that, exec one? that executive order is probably toast. We'll reverse that. Okay. How about the one on the sexual orientation and gender identity? No, I, I just have to look at the I have not, but I'm aware of the fact that, look, I had home health care. I had the nurses, the Ohio, the heck was it, the Nurses Association up, just showed up one day and said, we endorsed you and we want to give you some money. And uh, I, I was just kind of stunned, and, didn't even, and it was because they felt that they were being taken advantage of and being forced to pay dues, and they were outraged by it. And uh, I don't want people being forced into things like that, and, you know, the answer to that one, that one's toast. Okay, good. Thank you all. That was easy. <laughs> And I don't care if LeBron scores 120. He didn't get any favor with me. <laughs>